All right, today we're going to be doing lesson 66, multiplying mixed numbers. Um, I'm at my house and I kind of set this uh, filming studio up here, and I the lighting's weird, so I have a light right right over there, and so there's a shadow going this way. So I don't know. I'm not a professional YouTuber, but I do like teaching. So anyway, here's lesson 66. So here's your first question. If five kids had, let's see if this is a little bit better. Oh yeah, that's better. If five kids had one and a half cookies, how many cookies did they have? All together, of course. So we're gonna take one, one and one half, plus 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 one and one half. Well, that's repeated addition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and you guys know that repeated addition is multiplication. So I'm gonna take uh, one and one half times five kids. Okay, you guys know how to make that into a fraction. Put it over one. Whoosh. There, five is now five over one, which is a fraction. Now in order to make this into a fraction, we gotta do the backward C. Now you know that the number one is really, one is really equal to two halves, okay? So I'm gonna take two halves and I'm going to add it to one half. Two halves plus one half is three halves, okay? So I no longer need this. Now we can multiply. Three times five is 15. 2 times 1 is 2, and then you can do top divided by bottom, 15 divided by 2, some people can do it in their head, that's fine too, so that's going to be 7, 7 times 2 is 14, subtract 1 left over, so it's, your answer is going to be 7 and 1 half. So if 5 kids have 1 and a half cookies, you have 7 and a half cookies. Okay, so that's a real life example. So let's go ahead and do a couple more practice. Alrighty, I have a water bottle that holds two and two or three and two thirds cups. If I drink the bottle two and a half times, so I go home with half a bottle of water, um, dot dot dot, how many how many cups of water did I drink that day? All right, so let me erase this because I have a small board and um, I'm just going to remember three and two thirds times two and one half, okay? All right, so this is number two. I have three and two thirds, and I'm gonna drink that two and one half times. Okay, you can't multiply this, so you have to do what I call the backward C. And you guys kind of, I already kind of told you this about, uh, told you guys about this. I'm gonna take three times three, you take the denominator times the whole number, so you just multiply those together and you get a number. Then, we're trying to rewrite this fraction as an improper fraction. That's basically what we're doing in order to finish this problem. So then you get a number, and so now I have 9 thirds. I need to add the numerator, which in this case is 2 to the 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So that is where I get the numerator for this new fraction I'm gonna have. Then the denominator just comes straight down. So I get that three and put it right there. So let's write a new, let's write an improper fraction that is equivalent to this mixed number. Okay, so, so three and two thirds equals 11 thirds. Now let's do the backward C for this. I'm taking the mixed number, rewriting it as an equivalent improper fraction. Two times two is four. Okay, so now I have four halves. That big two stands for four halves. Then I'm going to add the numerator. Four plus one, of course, is five. And then I just take the denominator and put it right there. Now you simply multiply straight across. 11 times five is 55. Three times two is six, okay? Then you just do um, top divided by bottom. So I'm gonna take 55 and divide that by six. Um, 6 will go into 55 9 times. 9 times 6 is 54. Subtract, you're going to have 1 left over. So you're going to have 1 on as your numerator and 6 your divisor as your denominator. So you drank 9 
and one six cups of water at school that day. Okay, it's important to drink water. Okay, here's a little area problem. Say you have a room that's three, uh, three yards by 40 yards. Okay, very simple to find the area. You just take um, length times width. Multiply those two dimensions and your area is going to be equal to four times three, which is 12. 12 square yards. Now, we know that most of the time you're, in life you're going to deal with fractions. So let me grab my eraser real fast. What if the two dimensions are not three and four? What if I'm going to add a half a yard right here? And I am going to add, so I'm going to add a half a yard there. And then this is going to be a half, half a yard longer as well. So this is going to, the distance from there to there has increased. So now you're going to have three and a half. And the distance from there to there has also increased. So now you're going to have four and one half. Okay, so all of this area right here is all extra space. Area, the con that does not change the formula for finding area. The area is still going to be equal to the base times the height. Okay, so I'm going to take four and one half times three and one half. I'm going to erase this. It's in my way. Okay. So we use our new algorithm that we just learned. Two times four, backward C. Two times four is eight. We're writing a mixed number here. Two times four is eight. Plus one is nine. Then you bring the two straight down. The denominator goes there. Then I'm going to do backward C for this one. Two, two times three is six. Plus one is seven. Bring that two straight down. And then you simply multiply across. Nine times seven is 63. Two times two is four. And then you can do top divided by bottom. I'm going to do that over here real fast. Not too far on the screen. Um, 63 divided by 4. 4 will go into 6 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract. 6 minus 4 is 2. Um, bring the 3 straight down. 4 will go into 23 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract. You're going to have a remainder of 3. So your answer, your area is now, instead of 12 square yards, your area is... 15 and 3 fourths square yards. Okay, so there's a couple different reasons why you need to know how to multiply mixed numbers. All right, so number two on your homework, part A, it says there are 12 boys in the class and 30 students. Okay, and it, and it says find the ratio of Boys to girls. So when you're finding ratios, you'd put boys on top and girls on bottom. So what's the number that is associated with boys is 12. And the number that's associated with girls is 30. Uh, incorrect. This is the mistake a lot of people make. It says 30 students. It does not say 30 girls. The number here should be associated with girls. So in order to find how many girls there are, you have to take... 30 minus the 12 boys, get, get rid of the 12 boys, I'm sure the girls would love to do that, 30 minus 12, and then that will give you the number of girls. So in this case, there would be 18 girls. So the ratio of boys to girls would be 12 to 18. And then if you reduce that, you could um, divide both of those by 6. These are both multiples of 6, both divisible by 6. So your ratio is going to be 12 divided by 6 is 2, 18 divided by 6 is 3. 2 to 3. That means for every 2 boys, there are 3 girls. Alright, second part of the problem, part B, it says, what is, if all the students' names are written on a piece of paper and then placed into a hat, and you randomly draw them out, what is the uh, theoretical probability that you will draw a girl? So probability 
um, that uh, the card will be a girl. The name will be a girl when you randomly pull them out of a hat. Will be, well, how many girls are there? There are um, 18 girls out of a total of 30 possibilities, okay? So 18 girls, that's the desired result. If you want to pull a girl out of the hat, because that's what it states right here. And um, total possible outcomes are 30. So then you can reduce those two. Um, so I'm going to divide both of these by two. These are both divisible by two. 18 divided by two is nine. 30 divided by two is 15. Notice, you can still reduce this, okay? So I'm going to divide both of these by 3, because both of these numbers are divisible by 3. Uh, 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, I can get rid of a step right here. If you take um, 2 times 3, which would be 6. So if you divide, and that would be the greatest common factor, I mean, I don't mind how you guys reduce, as long as you get the right answer. But if you can think of the greatest common factor of 18 and 30, which is 6, like I did up here, you can reduce these problems a little bit quicker. So 18 divided by 6 is going to be 3. 30 divided by 6 is going to be 5. Oh, see, I saved myself a step. All right, number 14 is 5 divided by 25 hundredths. Well, um, what I like to do is I like to change this to a fraction. We know that 25 hundredths, you should memorize, um, is 1 fourth. Okay? Now I'm going to put that over 1, and then I'm going to keep the first one, change that sign, and flip 4 over 1. <coughs> um, this is really multiplying by the reciprocal as you go on in math. You won't use the keep change flip method as much. You'll think multiply by reciprocal. Okay? Well, 5 times 4 is going to be 20. 1 times 1 is 1. And we know that 20 divided by 1 is 20. 